Microsoft just released the new AI agent mode in Excel and honestly, it's going to change how we use spreadsheets. Simply by describing what I want, it's able to generate dashboards with tables and visuals, create full-blown financial models from scratch, combine multiple Excel files into one, and so much more. Best part is the results are dynamic, so if any of the numbers change, you'll notice that the whole model updates automatically. That's because it's using built-in Excel features like formulas, pivot tables, and conditional formatting. It's not available to the general public just yet, but let me show you four super impressive real-life examples of what it's capable of. As you can see, I have Asian mode activated over here to the side, and down on the bottom, I can describe what I want in text format. So suppose that I have a $500,000 20-year mortgage with a 6% interest. I wanted to create an amortization table, so basically I want to see how much I have left to pay every month, what amount of that is principal payment, so paying down the actual loan, versus interest, so the fee to the bank. Now let's go ahead and run that. It's taken a few minutes, but here's what it's come up with. It's created this entire dashboard from scratch, where we've got the mortgage inputs and summary. So here are all of the different inputs, and down below we have the actual amortization table. It's a 20-year mortgage, so we should have a total number of periods of 240, which seems to be the case. Also, at the very end, we should have paid it off completely, so the ending balance should be exactly zero, as it seems to be the case. And you'll notice, as you're looking through the numbers, it's actually using formulas. That means that it's all going to be dynamic. So if I change the loan amount from 500k to 600k and hit enter, you'll notice that all of the data updates. Let me go back to the 500k, and if you were to try something like this just using formulas in Excel, you would need to know quite a few more niche ones like the IPMP formula. And then on the right hand side, we actually have a full explanation of what's happened. So first it understands the task that you want it to do, and then from there it actually goes ahead and gives you an explanation of what's happening. So it's got the actual formulas that it's using, like this one over here for the PMT. If we keep scrolling down, you can see the full breakdown of what formula is where. That's a very impressive start, and the nice thing about this is that you can ask it follow-up questions. So you can see here it says I can add a small line chart for the ending balance over time for a visual play of curve. Now let me just paste that in here and say create this. After a few minutes of thinking, you'll notice that it's created this chart on the side where we've got the ending balance, and obviously over time it starts to go down. Even further to the right, we have the actual data, and you can see what kind of formula it's using for it. So far, you might have noticed that Asian mode doesn't actually give you a preview of what it's going to do. Instead, it just simply does it in your worksheet, and Microsoft says this is something they're currently working on, so that it actually asks you if you want to accept or reject the current proposal first. The example I've just shown is actually slightly simple because it's not using any of our own data that we uploaded. So here we're gonna do a slightly harder example where you can see we have a lot of different transactions. Let's suppose these are bank transactions for our personal finances. So you can see in the month of January, the different types of expenses or incomes that we had. Ideally, we would like to see a summary of this. So in the month of January, what were all of my incomes and what were all of my expenses? We want to see that for the entire dashboard. In terms of what to ask, you could say to make a personal finance dashboard showing the income, expenses, and savings per month using the data set that I have right here with all of the transactions from January to May. So here's the prompt results, and you can see that it's actually created a full personal finance dashboard where for each of the months we have the income, the expenses, the savings, and even the savings rate with the if error formula in there just in case our number gives us an error. And for the income, it's using the sum ifs formula, which is probably the same one that I would have used had I been using this sheet one as the reference. You can see it's created all of that in a new tab. We've got the totals for the entire time period right here. And down below, we have an actual visual showing all our trends. Doing something like this manually in Excel would have definitely taken us 10 plus minutes because of all of the different formulas. Now let's actually test if it's able to accommodate for any changes. So suppose right here in the amount I put a huge number just so we can see if it updates. If we head over to the dashboard, you can see that that January month clearly updated because of that. 
If you've been paying close attention, you might have realized right now we're using Excel for the web. And that's because this feature is currently only available as a plugin. So you can see that I'm using this preview, Excel Labs. That's how I'm getting it to work. Eventually, it's going to be part of the Copilot feature. So hopefully that's going to be a, a lot easier to use. And it's also going to be available in the Excel app and not just online. So far, we've only been working with one worksheet at a time, but what happens when we've got multiple worksheets? For instance, over here, you can see we have some data for January, February, and March, and we want to combine it into a master file. This is actually a pretty realistic Excel scenario. So I'm going to go over to the add-in right here for the Asian mode. And as a prompt, I can write something like this to combine all of the data from each of these sheets into a single worksheet. And I also want it to be dynamic. So if any new rows or columns get added over here, I want those to be reflected in the master tab automatically. While we're at it, we might as well also add some formatting elements like these over here. Now I'm just going to run that. After a few minutes, you can see that we have the fully consolidated result where we have the data for the month of January, the month of February, and the month of March. In the prompt, we did say that we wanted it to update automatically in case new rows get added. So in the March one, let me just go ahead and copy this part and paste it down below. And I'm going to make this number very large so it stands out. Now, if we go back to the master sheet, you can see that it's been added on the very bottom and the number is indeed very large for the unit sold. You also might have noticed as I'm scrolling through the sheet that it's actually using a pretty complex formula to make this happen. Asian mode also exists in PowerPoint and Word, which I'm going to show you later in the video. But first, I want to give it one final difficult test, which is to create a discounted cash flow. So right here, I'm asking it to build a DCF for a sample company with assumptions, forecasts, a free cash flow calculation, and a sensitivity analysis. And overall, I would say that this task is considered relatively difficult, even for finance students in university or early working professionals. After a few minutes, here's what the results look like. We've got the whole assumptions table over here on one side, and then we've got the forecast. So this is a full PNL forecast, all the way to the free cash flow down on the bottom, and it even calculates the present values. All the way down right here, it's got the implied share price for this sample company. If I keep scrolling over to the side, you'll notice that it's got a sensitivity table. And then down on the bottom, we have this unlevered free cash flow visual, which I don't think looks entirely right. After all, having the years as a line chart doesn't make too much sense in this scenario. That said, this whole area right here seems very promising. In fact, if I change the revenue, let's say to 5 instead of 100, you'll notice that all the numbers update too. And we can make all of the different changes just on this assumptions tab. If I look over to see the different calculations that it's using, I can see that it's using all of the dollar signs, which is a best practice. And for things like the present value on the bottom, you can see that it's using these different calculations. Before we move on to Asian mode for PowerPoint and Word, if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed at how fast AI is moving and how missing out on this AI boom could hurt your career, I'd recommend you check out our brand new AI for Business and Finance course. It's designed for non-technical people and you'll start by learning the essential AI concepts like tokens, agents, and more. Then we'll get hands-on with today's top tools and how to get the most out of them with prompt engineering. Following this, we'll dive into AI-powered data analysis with tools like Copilot, Julius, and Bricks, and even build websites, repayment calculators, budget planners, all without writing any code. Finally, we'll apply everything to real business scenarios like using agents to automate market research, custom GPTs to analyze financials, and much more. So click in the link in the description below to get started with our AI for Business and Finance course. So far, we've been focusing on Asian mode for Excel, but this also exists for PowerPoint and Word. It's this one right here, the Office Agent. And you can see that we have the PowerPoint option where when you click on it, we have that tag and same thing for the word. You'll notice that Excel is currently blurred out and that's because it's still not being released. The cool thing about this is that it doesn't actually require a Copilot license. As you can see, it's not inside PowerPoint or Word or any of these other applications. To show you some examples of what it's capable of, over here you can see that we have this prompt up top, which is one of their sample prompts to analyze the last 10 years of the semiconductor industry. 
And if we scroll a bit lower down, you can see that you can actually customize a few different things. For instance, what kind of theme you want. You can also change things like how many slides you want, etc. Over on the right hand side, you can see the actual presentation. Let me click on present to make that full screen. Overall, I find the design a lot better than the built-in PowerPoint Copilot one. And you can see that some of these animate as well. One of the more impressive things about this is that you can actually download it and make it a PowerPoint. So it's not just a PDF that you can't actually edit. Switching on to Word, you can see that it works pretty similarly. Right here, we have the prompt that we added. And then down below, we can also make some customizations. Based on that, it's created this whole report down here. And of course, you can download this into Word and make any edits. As with any new feature, Asian mode does have its limitations. For instance, here we have a few different sheets. So you might wonder, can we create a chat for the January sheet and a separate chat for the February one? That doesn't quite work as you can really only make one chat for all. Secondly, as with most AI models, the answer isn't always consistent. So I can get this exact same prompt where ideally I want it to give me the exact, exact same formula and same type of answer, but maybe when I ask for the data for the second quarter, so for the April, May, and June, it's gonna give me a slightly different formatting and probably slightly different formulas too. Thirdly, I've noticed that when you give it a very vague prompt with a lot of data in it, let's suppose we had hundreds of rows and I asked it for something like create a sales dashboard, it's usually not going to work as well. It might give you an error or create visuals that don't make that much sense. Looking specifically at Office AI, right now it doesn't allow for any uploads. Maybe you have a previous PowerPoint that you wanted to use the same design for, you can't easily do that. Same thing with Word, you can't just add some previous data. I imagine Microsoft is aware of these limitations, so hopefully they come up with the new features soon. The AI agent mode is just one of the many new features that Excel has come up with recently. Another super impressive one is the Copilot function, which you can learn with this video over here. And if you want to stay up to date on the latest AI features and how to apply them to your job, you should take our AI for business and finance course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.